So it's been a little while since we've looked at a new MacBook on this channel, so today I'm introducing you to the tiniest MacBook ever made. So I won't deny it, in the past I've been very very partial to 15 inch MacBook Pros. I don't hesitate to say that they're by far and away my favorite of the MacBook lineup. However, I have been interested in the MacBook since it was rebooted in 2015 because it's the exact opposite of a MacBook Pro. Where the MacBook Pro is focused on power and performance, the MacBook focuses on portability and lightness. So I wanted to see what doors I could open if I switched to this tiny, tiny machine. So first off, this thing is absolutely tiny. I have gotten so used to 15 inch laptops over the years. So switching to this tiny 12 inch display has really been an experience. I thought I'd be squinting all the time to see things on this screen. However, I've been pleasantly surprised by how nice this display really is. This mini retina's resolution of 2304 by 1440 means it's just as crisp as the retina displays I've come to know and love over the years. The keyboard is also refreshingly familiar. It uses the exact same size butterfly keyboard as every other one out there which means that it's no extra hassle to get used to typing on this keyboard. The only thing was that since this is the 2015, it uses the first generation butterfly switch mechanism, which isn't quite as tactile and snappy as the newer models, but really has not been that bad. The same goes for the very nicely sized trackpad that also features force touch, just like my MacBook Pro. Honestly, this MacBook has been a perfect little mini me for my MacBook Pro. If you think about it, it's very, very similar. It has the same sized keyboard, a very similar trackpad, the same sort of design aesthetic, it's even the same color, and uses the same charger as the MacBook Pro. It's just crammed into this tiny package. So, how much did I pay for this little nugget of Mac? Well, this model is the original 2015 model that is upgraded to the Max. It has the $150 option upgraded 1.3 gigahertz Core M processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, that was non-upgradable at the time that this computer was new, and the 512 gigabyte SSD. These aren't exactly MacBook Pro level specs, but given that the logic board in this computer is about the size of an index card, and really not that much thicker, uh, and is also fanless. I'm really, really very impressed by that. So this top spec 2015 MacBook originally cost $1,750 back in 2015, but today I paid just $700 for this, including shipping. Now, this may seem like a lot given that we have a low power five watt processor, but really this computer isn't about specs. And I've said this before with other MacBooks, but this computer is really the epitome of the it's not about specs statement when it comes to the Mac. This computer, you can tell specs were not going to be the number one priority. When you're buying a computer like this, you're clearly not buying it for intense productivity work. You are buying it for the really lovely full-sized backlit keyboard the smooth glass trackpad, the aluminum build, the retina display, the thin and light, the tons of batteries, the fanless architecture, the list goes on and on, but it does not include performance. That is not what this laptop is about. Now, I say this is the cheapest MacBook, and while you can get something less expensive that has obvious dents or other damage, missing keys, etc., this is definitely the cheapest damage-free MacBook on eBay at the time of this filming. To be honest, that's not too bad considering it is also the highest spec for this year. Now, this deal may not be something you can replicate. As I said, it is the cheapest. Uh, for an extra sort of $30 or $40, you can walk away with the base model from this year, which should be just fine. I mean, the processor really isn't that much different. And 500 gigabytes of storage is a little bit overkill, but I went with it just because it was such a good deal. So you can absolutely get these for about 730, 740 bucks. And for that, honestly, you probably won't notice a difference. Now, I've only been using this laptop a little while so far, but I am absolutely enchanted. I never thought I'd find a laptop like this useful as someone who does so much video editing, photo editing, and gaming in Windows, for Christ's sake. I mean, I do so much with the 
performance of my MacBook Pro that I really never thought that a computer like this would be useful to me. But since then, I've taken this little two pound slice of Mac with me to class, to cafes, on the bus, on the train, and I have to say, it's really, really useful. Its portability makes it a treat to use in public and carry with me wherever I'm going. And for 90% of the tasks that don't require the extra performance of a MacBook Pro, this thing is simply excellent. Look at that. It's so small and light that you can hold it extremely easily with just two fingers. This thing is truly, truly tiny. Now, I'll be posting a much more in-depth review as I use this machine more and get used to the quirks and features and the little ins and outs of what makes this machine what it is. But for now, I'm very, very surprised by how much I've enjoyed having this laptop and it's only been a couple days. As usual, make sure to head over to my subreddit if you have any questions or topics for discussion. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.